Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about Ken Griffin donating to the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange to turn off the buy button again. How might you do this? With the new rule 713. So stay tuned and let's make some money. But before I dive into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to the 5,100 of you that have currently dinged that notification bell, because you guys are always the first to watch a new video as soon as it's released. So guys, be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell if you haven't already, so that you don't miss another video just like this one. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So this hedge fund billionaire is a huge fan of Senator Kelly Loeffler. But why? Finance mogul Ken Griffin gave big chunks of cash to Kelly Loeffler's PAC, and the timing is intriguing. On October 9th, billionaire Ken Griffin, the head of a multinational financial services company, gave $2 million to a super PAC called Georgia United Victory, or GOV, which had originally been launched by allies of Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, but at the time exclusively supported Senator Kelly Loeffler's election campaign. Griffin ranks among the richest people in America, and during the 2020 election cycle, he spent at least $57 million to support conservative candidates, most of that on Republicans in tight US Senate campaigns. He donated significant sums to support Senator Susan Collins of Maine, Senator Cory Gardner of Colorado, Senator Martha McSally of Arizona, and Michigan GOP candidate John James, among others. But his $2 million donation to Gov on October 9th was one of his 10 largest contributions ever, and he had already given the Loeffler centric PAC $1 million about five weeks earlier, so a total of $3 million. Griffin's donation to Gov on October 9th also came one day after the Wall Street Journal reported that one of his companies, Citadel Securities, a separate entity from the Citadel Hedge Fund, which Griffin also runs, had reached an initial agreement to buy one of its competitors, a company called IMC, for a price in the tens of millions of dollars. It also coincidentally comes about four days before the introduction or the proposition of this new rule 713, trading suspensions, to suspend trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Citadel Securities is one of the world's leading market makers, meaning a company that quotes both a buy and a sell price for a trade, hoping to make a profit on the spread, and the proposed acquisition would make Citadel Securities the largest designated market maker, or DMM, on the New York Stock Exchange, with domains over trades for more than half of all securities listed on the exchange. But before that could happen, management of the world's most famous stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, had to approve the deal. That followed in due course, and according to a Citadel Securities press release, the acquisition of IMC was finalised on November 18th. As it happens, Kelly Loeffler's husband, Jeffrey Sprecher, is a chairman of the New York Stock Exchange, as well as founder and CEO of Intercontinental Exchange, ICE. Loeffler herself sits on a Senate committee that oversees Wall Street and the financial markets. To be clear, there is no evidence of any illegality surrounding Griffin's contributions to the Loeffler Super PAC. But it does seem very, very coincidental that a few days ago, on October 13th, this new Rule 713 trading suspensions just got proposed. This also ties in with Citadel's upcoming fight with the SEC on the new delimit orders. Citadel is suing the SEC over the new delimit order that would protect displayed lit orders from being picked off by latency arbitrage players. Citadel said the SEC failed to properly consider the costs and burdens imposed by this proposal that will undermine a reliability of our markets and harm tens of millions of retail investors, supposedly. And Citadel and the SEC are going to court next week on October the 25th about it. So what is a delimit order? The delimit order is designed to protect liquidity providers from potential adverse selection by latency arbitrage trading strategies. This rule basically gives traders a way to buy or sell stock at the exchange while protecting them against unfavourable price moves. The delimit order is an artificial intelligence order type that protects displayed lit orders from being picked off. So it basically prevents Citadel from trading ahead of their customers. If Citadel get an order for a certain stock at $35, for example, they can't go out and buy it for $34.90 and sell it to the customer for $35 or buy it for 35, push the price up, and sell it to the customer for 35.10. Now over the last few weeks, you may have noticed that I've advertised the GSX gold standard cryptocurrency. 
Well, they've just run their first ever in-person event, and I'd like to share with you a little footage. <laughs> We're here at the first ever GSX Marketplace. This thing has been hopping all day long. This is our first go around. We're gonna have these reoccurring in this location and many others soon. Um, it's been incredibly successful even this first time. We've had hundreds of people show up. We've been very excited about this initiative. Um, and I'm very glad that we're finally able to show you what we've been up to behind the scenes. This event was ran to introduce real-world application to cryptocurrencies and stablecoins. And GSX will be running many more events like this in the future. So if you want to buy a cryptocurrency that has real-world application, then be sure to check out the link down in the description below to buy some GSX. But remember to do your own due diligence, as this is not financial advice. So market arbitrage is the act of buying a security in one market and then simultaneously selling it in another market for a higher price, like buying a stock in the dark pool and then selling it on a late exchange for a higher price. Traders frequently attempt to exploit the arbitrage opportunity by buying a stock on a foreign exchange or dark pool where the share price hasn't yet been adjusted for the fluctuating exchange rate. And of course, Citadel personnel argue that the delimit rule is detrimental to millions of retail investors and undermines the reliability of the markets. Now, the argument as to why the SEC and Citadel are ending up in court is because Citadel enjoys unfair advantages over other participants. In a schedule of documents detailing the court hearing, the SEC explains how Citadel has profited billions from high-frequency trading. The delimit order won't just target Citadel securities, as it's going after a handful of other high-frequency trading firms as well that try and manipulate the market and take advantage of us retail traders. Eliminating these manipulative strategies would be extremely bullish for retail investors. For example, the markets wouldn't be as volatile. High-frequency trading has been the cause for several market meltdowns, so eliminating this practice would provide retail investors with a fair playground. So how will the delimit order affect meme stocks like AMC and GameStop? The delimit order will allow momentum stocks such as AMC and GameStop to run more naturally by eliminating some of the manipulation that suppresses the stocks from performing better. The thing about arbitrage trading is that because these hedge funds are able to find foreign exchanges where the price hasn't yet been adjusted, such as potentially the Brazilian BDRs, they can buy current price stocks and sell short in other exchanges. So effectively, in very, very quick succession, Citadel are covering their shorts by buying Brazilian BDRs and then reshorting more AMC shares in the lit New York Stock Exchange market. And the delimit order is meant to eliminate these strategies. This market arbitrage could very well explain how hedge funds and high frequency trading firms have been able to short momentum stocks despite the massive buying pressure from retail investors. And therefore, we need to ensure that the delimit order is upheld as it would create a massive change in the markets in general, not just for the ape community. And therefore, the order must be upheld. There's absolutely no justification as to why it wouldn't be or why it shouldn't be. Now, I also wanted to touch on the wider market in general as well. FX Hedge just tweeted saying China's financial system nears peak stress levels, but spillovers are still yet to come as per Dansk Bank. And therefore, clearly, it's not just the Chinese property sector that's in trouble. It's also China's entire financial system. And on top of this, the US also doesn't seem to be faring too well either. An Ohio pension manager risks running out of retirement money. His answer? Take more risks. Mr. Majid is the investment chief for an $18 billion Ohio school pension that provides retirement benefits to more than 80,000 retired librarians, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, and other former employees. The problem is that his fund pays out more pension checks every year than its current workers and employers contribute. That gap helps explain why it is billions of dollars short of what it needs to cover its future retirement promises. The bucket is leaking, he said. The solution for Mr. Majid, as well as other pension managers across the country, is to take on more investment risk. 
His fund and many other retirement systems are loading up on illiquid assets such as private equity, risky private loans to companies and real estate. The so-called alternative investments now compromise 24% of public pension fund portfolios, according to the most recent data from the Boston College Center for Retirement Research, and that's up from 8% in 2001. And at Mr. Majid's fund, alternatives are a whopping 32% of his portfolio at the end of July, compared with only 13% in fiscal 2001. Now, while it seems to be working so far, that's not guaranteed for the future. These types of blockbuster gains aren't expected to last for long, however. Analysts expect public pension funds' returns to dip over the next decade, which will make it harder to deal with the core problem facing all funds. They don't have enough cash to cover the promises they made to retirees. And now finally, I also wanted to touch on cryptocurrency as well. While a futures-based ETF will massively affect the spot price of Bitcoin, a technical and general analysis. The SEC has now finally approved the Bitcoin futures ETF. However, it seems like the sentiment about this in terms of price movement for Bitcoin is not where it should be. People think that purchases of a futures ETF will have almost no effect on the spot price of Bitcoin, which is absolutely untrue. When a futures ETF launches, there will be way more buying than selling pressure. We know this because there's going to be tons of funds out there that want to add this ETF to their offering and to their investment portfolios. We can see this already because futures on exchanges trade for a much higher price than the Bitcoin spot price. On FTX, the Bitcoin 0325 future is trading at $65,600, while Bitcoin itself is trading at $61,000, basically $61,000 flat. When futures ETFs launch, they too will reflect higher prices than the Bitcoin spot price. What will risk-averse smart investors do, like funds, they will short the high ETF price and buy Bitcoin spot on a lower price and pocket the difference, therefore buying physical or I guess, intangible Bitcoins themselves. From a general perspective, the approval of a Bitcoin futures ETF on Wall Street will legitimize the asset once and for all in the United States. It brings the credibility of crypto to a new level for many higher ups in finance. Also, regulation is still one of the biggest risks that we're facing. The further crypto can spread, the harder it will be to regulate crypto in a way that is harmful to the financial industry. And an ETF is doing exactly that, no matter whether it's a futures-based ETF or, or not. You can't take down something that is so deeply connected to the economy. And once people allocate their 401ks, their IRAs and more, regulators will be even more wary of hurting the crypto space. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about Ken Griffin effectively donating to the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange in order to turn off the buy button. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.